Thank you. Gracias. Emerald Lagasse, welcome to Emerald Live. Let me tell you, you know, I've never met a leg I didn't like. No. Gee. Talking about, like, duck legs and crab legs. You name it. We always fight over the turkey leg at Thanksgiving. And for Easter, you got to have a leg of lamb. Yeah, a lot of people. Yes. Yes, indeed. But you know, a lot of people overlook the legs. So tonight, I'm here to make sure the legs get a fair shake. <laughs> Speaking about shaking, give it up for Doc Gibbs in the end of the last. It's all about legs tonight. All about, all about the legs. All about legs. <laughs> yes. Luscious legs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right here on Emerald Live. <laughs> Boy, what a show we got tonight. Oh, Luscious great. legs. Legs. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> you want to know what's on the menu tonight? Yeah. Hello, Jay. Here's what's on the menu tonight. All about legs. We're going to start with a little cocktail drumette with a little Asian marinade that I'm going to show you that uh, is delicious that we can do in the oven. Pecan crusted duck confit. That would be a leg of duck that we're going to do, and also uh, have a little salad with that. Frog legs. Oh, I love frog legs. Yes. Frog legs. We're going to do them with a little tomato and garlic, and I'm going to show you a little secret of that. And then smoked turkey leg and sausage jambalaya. Oh, yeah. We may stick in a few other legs in there along the way, too. Who knows? But we're going to end it with a great leg of lamb. But let's get started on these uh, drumettes. That's the name, particularly, of the cut of them. Now, you know, they're no different. It's in the chicken family. You know what you got to do. You touch the chicken, you got to wash your hands. Everything comes in contact with chicken. You got to wash. <laughs> but basically, you can buy them. They're like the little drumsticks, if you will. But... You know, that wasn't good enough, so they had to call them drumettes. <laughs> yes. So, let me wash my hands. <laughs> Certainly don't want to hurt anybody. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a little quick Asian uh, marinade that I like with these drumettes. Wash the chicken real good, pat them dry, wash them, pat them dry, then they're ready. That's where they're at right now. Then what we're going to do here is we're going to take soy sauce in a blender, and mirin, which is uh, like a, a wine. So if you don't have any of that, you can substitute what you want. Peanut oil. Now, the one thing about peanut oil, a lot of people are allergic to peanut oil, so you want to be sure that they're not before you make this and they come over, because, <laughs> well, <laughs> no. A little sugar, some scallion, lots of fresh garlic. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah baby. A little ginger and some sesame oil. And uh, one of the things about sesame oil, folks, it's very perishable. You know, all oils are. They're eventually going to go rancid. But uh, sesame oil goes quick. And uh, if you have, you know who you are out there. You probably have a little jar of that sesame oil you've had in your pantry for, what, four or five years? <laughs> <laughs> Throw it out. So now what we're going to do is uh, take that, blend it up a little bit. 
Then we're going to season the drumettes with salt. And the little trick is you get the drumettes inside of a zip bag. Folks, it's great to do this, if you can, the day before. The more flavor you can get, the better. So we're going in here with the drumettes. And then what we're going to do is now take half of our little Asian marinade. We're going to save half to put in this saucepan. Inside the saucepan, we're going to add some sugar and a little crushed red pepper. Oh, humidity. <laughs> Love that. Bad hair day. <laughs> little sugar, some crushed red pepper, and we're going to slowly start steeping this up a little bit on low. Meanwhile, the old zip drumettes. Oh, look. Massage your drumettes. Make them happy. You know what happens when you rub legs. No, I'm saying the marinade here. You guys, stay out of this, will you? So you want to do that like a day in advance. And now you got these drumettes are just packed with flavor. I'm going to take a little tin foil lined sheet pan, rub it down with some oil, take the drumettes out of this mixture, lay them on there, and I'm going to bake them at 375 degrees in the oven. When we come back, I'll show you what they look like. Doc Gibbs! <laughs> Emma Lagasse here, luscious legs tonight. Woo! Yeah, we got those chicken drumettes. All right, let's go to them before we go uh, to the next dish. So you marinate them overnight, take them out, put them on that oiled sheet pan, 375 in the oven. You know, you're going to cook them for maybe about 40, 45 minutes. Meanwhile, half of the other marinade that we did is in the saucepan reducing down that you can see there on the stove. When you are ready to serve these, you know what I like about this? Not only are they inexpensive, pretty much everybody loves them, kids, young, old. It's great to do a little appetizer, a little hors d'oeuvre, going to have a little party for the family, some friends, great dish. Because you can do it ahead of time. If you marinate two days, it's only going to be better. Then when you're ready, you put them on the pan, put them in the oven. Folks are arriving. And here's how I like to finish them. You can see how they look right there. See, the thing I like about the, uh, the tinfoil trick here is because now I don't have really that much of a mess. You know, I just take the tinfoil off and let the dog have a potty and, you know, <laughs> here we go. Whatever. So when you're ready, I take the chicken drumettes, put them inside the bowl. Folks are like just arriving. So we'll get rid of this now. Then what I do to finish them, I go with that glaze that we made. Hot like that. Oh yeah, babe. What you want to do, I like to just sort of let them steep in there for a little bit. Oh, yes. I mean, talk about being happy. Come on. 
I'd be steeping in there for days. <laughs> so then when you're ready, what I do is just put them on a little platter like this. So now they have really sort of absorbed this flavor. You know, and everybody's not like crazy about just, you know, hot wings. You know what I mean? Not everybody, you know, like the, you know, the three-year-old is uh, not into, you know, a gallon of hot sauce <laughs> with a little celery and blue cheese. Like that's going to tone Johnny down a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> So now, I come back like this, just a little bit more. Yeah. A little bit more. Mm. Bam! There you have it. Oh. I uh, can't wait to share this next leg recipe with you. One of my luscious leg favorites. You uh, can buy these or you can make them. Taking duck legs, cooking them in its own fat or in oil for a slow amount of time, it now is called a, a duck confit, a leg confit. You can buy them now. They're already done like this. For me, what I like to do is I'm going to use this. I love this dish. I'm going to make a little salad, but first I got to give you the whole confit leg thing. First, in a little chopper, I'm going to take pecans and flour. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> and now, oh, you don't want to do this too... You don't want to make a paste. You just want to chop them. Let's have a chop test here. So you don't want to make a paste. So now what we've made, we've made like a pecan flour. Are you with me? So now that's going to go inside of here. Mm. And then we're going to take some essence and we're going to season the flour. We're going to season the eggs, season uh, the pecan flour as well. Meanwhile, this is a sort of traditional breading. I mean, you can bread shrimp, chicken, your neighbor, all kinds of things with this. It's very, very, just extremely balanced. You have seasoned flour, egg wash, and then you have generally breadcrumbs, but we're using the pecan flour. Now, what we're going to do is this. What I'm making here, I've gotten homemade andouille sausage. And I chopped it up, and I'm rendering that down. You can use whatever kind of sausage you have. Just chop it up. Italian sausage would work. Andouille's got a little bit spice. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that, since it's rendered, put it in this bowl. And then I have shallots and onion and garlic and balsamic vinegar, and I'm going to make a little balsamic vinegar andouille vinaigrette here. What I'm going to do is take the legs now. Dredge them in the flour. Then they go in the egg. Then when they're all egged up like this now, they're getting eggy. <laughs> if you need a hand, what I'll generally do is just take like a little tablespoon and just make sure they're all egged up. From there, they're going to go into the pecan flour. Are you with me? Then we're going to start sautéing them in olive oil. When we come back, I'm going to finish the whole duck confit salad. Stick around. Back in.
Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band, folks. Oh, yeah. yeah. How about them horns, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just joining us, welcome back. Luscious Legs works for me. I'm hearing this. You hear that? Yeah. Maybe we didn't pay the bill. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. It's possible. No, Ellen wouldn't do that. No, and we, and we have a big budget here, too. She's on, yeah, she's on top of that stuff. Yeah. So uh, we have duck legs that have been already confited, which means they're cooked. We breaded them in seasoned flour, egg wash, and then we made a pecan flour, and now they're cooking in olive oil. I don't have the heat so high because it's a food of love thing. So that's when I'm using my knob over here, and I am on about like medium. Now, the andouille that we rendered out, extracted the flavor out. I instantly gonna go in there first with balsamic vinegar. Any vinegar you want will work. Onion, shallot, garlic, salt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How are those drumettes? Fresh ground pepper. Now, before we start making this a vinaigrette, let's go check on our luscious legs. I'm going to use a spatula. People are worried about turning things over when they're putting in, in hot oil like this. You saw that little technique? You know, just go in there, hold your finger there, turn it, then let it go down nice and gingerly. Oh, yes. Look at this. Yes. All right. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go in here with the olive oil, slowly drizzling it in. Now we've got this unbelievable andouille vinaigrette. Mmm. Mmm. Now comes the fun pot. Take some beautiful spinach, baby spinach. Oh, yeah, babe, I know a little bit about spinach. And we're going to season it a little bit. Please wash it and dry it. Make sure it's dry. You don't ruin the, the salad. Then we're going to take that vinaigrette. And then we're going to lightly toss it. Go easy. Lightly. 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 What did it do to you? <laughs> lightly toss it. And then once it's all covered with the andouille vinaigrette, we're going to go on to the plate here. So this would be like one portion for me. And then we're going to go for the first leg. We're going to go in here, nice and brown on each side, and there you have it, a little duck home feet salad like that. Hey, stick around. Wait till you see what's next. Stay with me. Welcome back, Emerald Lagasse here. If you're just joining us, shame on you, because we have luscious legs in the house tonight, let me tell you. Yes, we did a little uh, chicken drumette, a little Asian style first, delicious. Just finished a wonderful duck confit, that would be a duck leg, spinach salad with uh, a uh, andouille vinaigrette. And uh, now, something that's uh, pretty amazing and popular in Louisiana is uh, frog legs. Oh, yeah. I love frog legs. 
The seasons generally through spring to summer, and uh, the smaller ones we use a lot in gumbos. They're really, really fantastic. No, they don't taste like chicken. <laughs> don't you when people are, oh, it tastes like chicken. No, it doesn't. It tastes like frog. <laughs> Anyhow. So let me show you a trick, because we do these a lot in the restaurant. These are what you can buy. These are fresh. And sometimes they'll come with the back. You split them in half. And to me, the best thing is to soak them, either in milk or buttermilk. They just sort of puffs them up a little bit, swells them up a little bit. Now, when you're ready, these have been in there for about a half an hour. I'm going to use my essence in here, the spice here, to just wake them up a little bit. I'm going to use a little of that. And, uh... Oh, well. We'll use not. <laughs> now, when you're ready, you got to dredge them inside seasoned flour. Now, you can deep fry them, and they'll get like uh, sort of almost like fried chicken, you know? Or you can get them in a skillet. That's how I like to do them real simple like this. So let me show you real quick. We'll get rid of the old wet pot of things. We'll go into the dry pot of things. How's that confit thing doing, huh? Oh, good. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to dredge them in this flour like we talked about. Very, very popular dish in, in Louisiana. And now that we get them all dredged with the flour like that, here's what we're going to then do. We're going to get this skillet fairly hot. We're going to add butter in here. Now, it's going to burn just like this in a hot skillet, so I cut it with olive oil. Okay? Makes the smoking point, the temperature, up a little bit than just butter. And then what we're going to start doing is we're going to start dredging and adding our frog legs in here. Now, sometimes I'll do these in a little Creole sauce. Sometimes I'll do them sort of like with just a little bit of chopped tomato and garlic. Oh, yeah, it's working for me. <laughs> All right, so we're going to uh, let these babies start cooking. And then we're going to move on here. All right, so the legs are in there. Got the heat up. And let's start making that happen. Now, while those are cooking, before I finish that dish, let me show you another dish using a different leg. Oh, I love this luscious leg. <laughs> and that is a smoked turkey leg. Oh. Okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is this. We're going to render down some andouille sausage, like I have right here. Once that andouille is rendered out, that flavor is all in there. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to add onion. We're going to add celery. We're going to add bell pepper. So that would be the trinity. While that is seasoning, we're going to add some essence in here to season that up. We're going to get this going here, about four or five minutes. Then we're going to add tomato product. Beside that, we're going to add hot chili pepper, scallions, yeah. garlic. Right. We're going to let that cook. We're going to season it beside with essence with a bay leaf, little hot sauce, some thyme. Crushed red pepper to bring it up another oh, yeah. notch. Yeah. Now we're going over here to the frog leg convention real quick. Don't try that at home. See, they're getting nice and... Oh, yeah, babe. Now, back to the old jambalaya here is what we're doing. Once this all cooks in 
Now we're going to add some tomato paste, which is going to be for the foundation. It's going to keep it all together. And some chicken broth. Oh, yeah, babe. Yeah. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mix that tomato paste inside of this. And then what we're going to do is this. We're going to put the turkey legs. Yeah. We're going to cover this up and let this simmer. Meanwhile, here we go. You ready? Garlic. Shallots, tomatoes, some salt, a little bit of white wine, some fresh parsley. We're going to simmer this for about two minutes, and when we come back, frog legs for everybody! Welcome back, Emerald Lagasse. I'm so excited right now, I'm drooling. <laughs> Luscious legs, you know what I mean? <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. <laughs> so, I've got a lot going on here. We better get started. I want to finish the frog leg dish. Oh, it is coming out so incredibly delicious. Now, I let him simmer during the commercial break. Here's how I like to finish these guys. Don't go in there breaking them all up. They're happy right now. <laughs> so now we're going to just put them on a platter like that. Oh, yeah, babe. And not only are we going to do that, we finish them with a little parsley. And how I like to finish them, right at the end when we're going to serve them, we just take some lemon. Meanwhile, the turkey leg, about an hour and a half, we're going to simmer that. A little lemon like that, fresh. Lemon slices. There you have it. Frog legs, ladies and gentlemen, all right? About an hour and a half later... We take the turkey leg out of our filling here, okay? Take them out and sort of shred them. They'll stop breaking apart like that, okay? Oh, yeah, babe. Put that on some, on some white bread with a little mustard. <laughs> oh, yeah. Talk about happy. Smoked turkey. Uh-huh. <laughs> now what we want to do... We're going to put this back in without the bone, right? And then what we're going to do without the bone and without the skin, then we're going to add the rice, some green onions. Now we're going to start simmering this to make jambalaya. About 20, 25 minutes when your rice is cooked, this is what it looks like right here. Look at that. Smoked turkey jambalaya. Oh, yeah. So you don't want to burn it. How I would serve it is like in dishes like this, right out of the pot, pot food like this, green onions. There you have it. Smoked turkey jambalaya. Oh, yeah, baby. What you want to do is you want to taste it and see. It's perfect. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now, during the break, 
I was like, hey, you know, we got meat, 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 meat. Why don't we do some crab legs, I said, right? So here's what we're going to do. I got some crab legs that generally come like almost frozen. And these little guys out here are sharp. They are. So what I do is just try to break them like that. If you don't have a good heavy knife, like a utility knife, like this, and we're just going to go over here, watch your hands, and we'll break them up so that they're manageable. Then what I do is in a skillet, I'm going to take some garlic cloves. Oh, yeah, babe. A little olive oil. Going to start frying up some garlic cloves real quick with a little salt. See how they're getting there like that? Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> then, then what we're going to do is start adding the, the crab legs in here. Yep. Real simple. We'll add some green onions. little parsley, kick it up a few notches, we'll add some crushed red pepper. Yeah. Then we'll add a little butter in here. And to make it a little bit happy, we'll add some white wine. Then what we'll do is we'll take a couple of limes and a lemon, squeeze them in there. And we'll let them just sort of steam. We'll lower the heat down and we'll let them steam. Are you with me so far? Yeah. All right. Mary had a little lamb, a little toast and a little jam. But she didn't have me. Because I'm here with you on Emerald Live. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a leg of lamb. You want to have a little bit of fat on it, OK? This has got bone in. What we're going to do first, we're going to season the fat side with some salt and pepper. You could always add a little essence, too. Then, put your oven on about 450 degrees right now. Then what we're going to do is take the fat side in a roasting pan. Boom. <laughs> then, we're going to take olive oil. We're going to rub that leg a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Underneath, too. Then, we're going to take some fresh garlic and just kind of sprinkle it on it like that and a lot of fresh rosemary. Oh, yeah. And we're just going to do that. Are you with me so far? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you with me so far? Oh, yeah. Good, because when we come back, another notch! Not good. in the Emerald Live Band. <laughs> Welcome back. Luscious legs tonight. Oh, yeah, we just had a roll, man. Smoked turkey leg jambalaya, frog legs fresh. We got some crab legs in the oven. We got a leg of lamb in the oven. You want to cook that leg of lamb 
four, four fifty for the first like twenty minutes. Then turn it down to like three fifty, and then you want to cook it the rest of the way until it gets about one hundred and forty five internal temperature. That would be like mid rare to medium. Muy bueno. How do you know that? Buy a thermometer. Invest in a thermometer. Seriously. I'm so into it. There's this new thermal thermometer now that they got. And uh, I have these. The guys wear these in the restaurant now. We're, we're like, kind of gone over the top. But insert the probe. Uh, and then it gives you uh, the great reading of what that lamb's going to be. They're a little expensive right now because they're brand new, like anything else. But uh, look at this. It's 67.7 degrees here in the studio. <laughs> it's true. All right. I want to do a classical sauce for this leg of lamb. Sometimes, uh, you know, I, I just lemon, garlic, I'm happy. But there's a sauce called Espanol. Another name is called demi -glace. And if you have that as a mother sauce, then you can make it into a compound sauce, which I'm going to do right now because I'm feeling very frisky right now. No, 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 I mean food-wise. <laughs> Ma'am, please, keep a G back there, will you? I'm talking food and legs. You're over there. Oh, boy. Have fun tonight with her, buddy. Just kidding. Jeez, have a little... I got some bacon, bacon grease in here. I like grease better than fat. I don't know, but... It... All right, so look. We're going to take that Espanol sauce with a little... Maripois. That would be carrot, celery, and onions. We're going to add thyme and bay leaves and peppercorns in here. Once this cooks in the uh, bacon fat for a little bit, we're going to season it. And then what we're going to do is add now a little tomato product to this. You could generally use a little white wine or red wine as well. So this is cooked in here. And what I want to do is put it right inside the Espanol sauce now. Going to let that simmer, let it get cooked up. Here I've got boiled potatoes working. All right. Y'all ready? Yeah. All right. I can smell the crab legs. I had them on the stove, and what I did is decided to finish them in the oven. So, come on, baby. So now what I want to do... Oh, look at this. Woo, 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 woo. So now, simply to serve these, I just take the crab legs out. And then what I'm going to do is take this all this wonderful sauce and this juice right here, right over the crab legs. Oh, yeah. Oh. Now, in some cases, if you buy this at the fishmonger, they're not going to come split. So that's where you want to use your poultry or kitchen shears. And let me give you a quick lesson. You just sort of use the shears like that, hold it down, and you could do it either before or after. And that's how you split the shell to make sure that you're going to get the, all the crab meat out of there. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! All right. So now the leg of lamb. Oh, that leg of lamb is about, uh, it's got to be close to 145. Take a look at this. Can you get a shot of this, you? Look at how beautiful this is looking right here. You see that? All right? Yeah, we really cook on this show, you know? What you want to do is you want to take it. Don't throw that yum-yums out here. What you want to do is put it on your board and let it rest a little bit. Okay? Meanwhile, what we're going to do now do here, I thought would be a nice accoutrement. I got some boiled potatoes. But you know what? We're going to mash them. And I'm going to show you a little secret. What we're going to do is go with the ones here inside of a hot skillet. The biggest mistake people make when they're going to mash potatoes, they don't drain them enough. They don't let the water cook out of them. See what I'm doing here? I'm actually cooking the water out of there. I didn't have anything in there. You hear it? like it's doing its thing here. Now the potatoes are vulnerable. So you season them with a little salt and pepper. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mash them with goat cheese and cream 
and have a little goat cheese mashed potatoes with the leg of lamb. The Espanol sauce. What we're gonna do to finish that classically, add a little bit of Madeira wine, some chopped truffles. You can use the canned ones, it's okay. Chop them up, put them in there. Oh, we kicked it up tonight. Now, the leg of lamb. What you wanna do is have a good carving knife and a fork. And what people don't realize is that you wanna stand it up and you wanna come down from the top and work in. You see how I'm doing that? Down and work in. Look at how delicious that looks. So we're gonna carve that up. Goat cheese, mashed potatoes, sauce espanol. It's legs, legs, and more legs. Yes. I'm Emma Lagasse. Thanks for joining me tonight. See you next time.